So uh, Apple's special event has just finished and uh, Pete and I have got some thoughts on what was featured. Uh, we're using this event for a pilot episode of our new podcast and this is a new format that we're just uh, trying out. If it's successful, then we're going to start a regular podcast on iTunes and all the usual platforms. Spotify, yeah, that's it. Uh, but we're also going to film episodes for YouTube as well. So hope you enjoy it. Uh, here's what we thought about the Apple special event. And uh, we're going to start just with the rumours, Pete, and the build-up for this. Yeah, there were there were a lot of rumours, which we, we kind of outlined in the video yesterday, didn't we? Um, so we weren't... Uh, I mean, everybody in the build-up, that uh, obviously we watched a few of the live streams, and it seems that everyone was very sure that we weren't getting iPhone 12. And yeah. uh, spoiler alert, no iPhone 12. So... <laughs> They were um, right. They were right, yeah. Um, we weren't sure whether that would be the case. We didn't see why Apple wouldn't release it. But uh, bear in mind, we were basing this on the fact that the Apple event, when you go, um, went to the website and... Booked it out. Yeah, you got, your calendar, you got a two-hour slot. Yeah. So, so the, the event was an hour. Yeah. I feel a bit cheated. I could have, you know, done something else with that other hour, but it's, it was booked out. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So uh, there's no iPhone 12. In fact, I think let's just let's just put it out there straight away. It's all about Apple Watch and iPad, and yeah. I think it's fair to say there's some there's some interesting things in there. But our general feeling is it uh, underwhelmed. I would say mm. I, I it felt you know when you get to the end of a packet of butter and yeah. you you want to make yourself a bit of toast and you think ah I've only got a little bit of butter left. And you think I'm gonna I'm gonna just get as much of that butter off the foil packet as I can, and I'm just gonna spread it as thinly as I can to try and accomplish something. That's what today's event felt like for me. It felt like a very long hour for essentially two products. I know people will say, ah, yeah, but there was there's multiple iPads in there, but it it did feel a little bit drawn out and a little bit overhyped. Yeah, well, it, it always does, doesn't it? Uh, Apple like to wax lyrical. A lot of use of terms like "this is an essential product." Like, you know, if you if you don't have one, then you, you know. yeah, your life's not worth living. Yeah, and how excited they are to get these products into customers' hands and um, the customers' money into their bank account. Of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, there were some things that um, you know. Tim started by talking about the Apple Watch, didn't he? The new, or, or actually, they started with with both segments about how the existing products have helped people. And to be fair, the Apple Watch does seem to have enriched people's lives. That's the word they used, uh, and they they've cited things like the health tracking has been life saving. We had some examples of that. Someone with an elevated heart rate who went into septic shock, but the, the watch had warned them of that, and they, they were on their way to hospital, and it, it potentially saved their lives. Um, a, a blind man who relies on his Apple Watch now for his day-to-day -day life, uh, an athlete with type 1 diabetes, um, and a guy who had high blood pressure and hypertension and thousands of dollars worth of expensive medication that he was able to get rid of because he his Apple Watch helped him to get in shape and I think that's a really important thing is with 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 the health and fitness thing it's a motivator but the only person who's going to get you in shape ultimately or the only thing that's going to get you in shape is you yeah so obviously this is way more interesting for you than it is for me I'm I almost fell asleep listening to you <laughs> recite the experiences again um, it's not that I've got anything against fitness per se uh, maybe we'll come back to that in a moment but let, let's talk watch OS 7 yep because that's where they, they really started. Actually, they, they mentioned also healthcare institutions are using watch data, and I think that's that's a, a good thing. You know, it helps yeah. to improve healthcare. That's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, those are laudable things. And um, there was a, they mentioned Mount Sinai. I don't know if that's hospital or healthcare institution. Um, that's obviously something in the US. But uh, they're using the existing watches to see possible indicators of COVID-19, but perhaps we can touch on that in a bit more detail a bit later. But yeah, watch OS 7. Yeah, so I, I come at this really from, um, you know, the channel's constant geekery, so I'm interested in the geeky techy stuff. Mm. Um, I've never had an Apple Watch. Um, I had a Samsung smartwatch. Nobody wants it. 
I actually thought it was really good. And in fact, it did a lot of things that the Apple Watch didn't do for many years afterwards, but then Apple made out like they invented it. But that's that's another video for another day. Um, I, I do have a Fitbit, which I use for, for sleep tracking. Don't you also use that for skin scouring? I, I do, but again, that's another video for another day. The um, Yeah, if you've got a Fitbit, don't keep it on all the time. That's all I'm going to say on that. Yep. Uh, Watch OS 7, we saw this released at WWDC earlier this year, so we kind of knew what was coming. A new native sleep app. Um, yeah. Nothing particularly... Nothing groundbreaking. Sleep apps are available for the Watch anyway. It's just that this is being baked into the OS. So Great. So not so great if you're a developer of one of those um, sleep apps. Uh, mm. Hand washing detection. I think that's really useful because I quite often am washing my hands and don't even realize that I'm washing them. So having my watch tell me that I am indeed washing my hands will be fantastic. Uh, you, you joke, but there are a lot of people who don't wash their hands for a long time. And probably, again, another conversation for another video on probably another channel. But there are a lot of blokes who certainly pre-COVID didn't wash their hands in gents, public, public gents' toilets. So, I d- um, I've got to tell you a story on this one. Go on. So I... I needed to go to the loo and uh, I went to Tesco, which is, uh, if you're watching outside the UK, it's a big supermarket um, because I was in, in the hope that the toilets would be cleaner. If, if you're caught short, you know, and um, you need you need a longer time to do your, your toilet, if you, if you know what it is that I'm saying. More of a download than a stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I go into the into the cubicle. This this Somebody came barging into the into the toilet like (laughs) there was a big emergency going on i took the cubicle next to me and uh he he sort of chanted as he was going to the toilet (laughs) i'm not gonna repeat the word he was using but it was something get out get out oh dear like this and he 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 finished his business i managed to not not laugh too much and um he left the the toilet without washing his hands and uh, after all that after all that and this is not an unusual thing and no. I, I had a conversation with my wife about it and she said actually it's just as bad in the ladies really yeah so so people go to the toilet and they don't wash their hands i mean i i didn't even know that was a thing but apparently that is a thing that no. people would would go and deal with feces and not wash their hands i uh, it, it beggar's belief but that's not what we're talking about not what you were expecting on constant geekery today was it but uh no it's it's a valid point though about the hand washing detection sorry for for the record though pete i just want to say i don't believe that apple watch is going to change that i I don't think that if somebody goes to the toilet and doesn't wash their hands that they're going to suddenly start doing that because they're wearing apple watch unless it's got toilet detection as well no but for those who do already wash their hands or have got into that rather basic sanitary habit if it's detecting that you're washing your hands Sometimes, you know, we're, we're encouraged to sing a song maybe a couple of times that will help us with the 20 seconds of recommended time. It's a convenient thing, but just wash your hands properly. You don't need an Apple Watch. It seems a bit like the, the kind of, you know, I bought a toothbrush. I bought the best one I could afford because it was the, the, the fastest spin. Um, but it's also Bluetooth. I did try it. It's a novelty, isn't it? I mean, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Your- Toothbrush. A Bluetooth toothbrush. It doesn't make your teeth blue, but what what it does is it on your phone you can see how long you've been brushing for. So basically, the same thing that a, a conventional watch could achieve or clock. Indeed. Mm. Okay. Um, but I I suspect it might be something like that that the novelty wears off. Anyway, we've spent far too long on that. So we let's have. So meet. just the the other OS seven headline feature right. was the VO two max for measuring cardio fitness levels. Uh, so I I haven't done particularly large amounts of research on that at the moment but it has it okay good I'm, it means nothing to me I'll be, I'll be honest um so then we get to the to the new watch itself and um still has a crown still has a crown you're disappointed by that well it was just one of the rumors that they might be dispensing with the digital crown to go for a touch id um smooth one which you know the apple watch I've got a Series 2, as you might know. Um, it has that crown on it, and it does protrude. So if you're doing something sporty or active, there is a, a chance you could knock it, which is true of any watch, I suppose. Uh, but getting rid of that would seem like a sensible thing for a watch that is very much geared at the health and fitness uh, individual. But it still has one, so... It, it basically looks like the old watch. 
Yeah, it looks. They didn't even say that it was particularly different. They just said it had a beautiful design. But it does come in more colours: blue aluminium, gold stainless steel, black graphite, and now a product red. Oh, I do like a bit of product red. I, yeah, I like that red colour. I don't think I'd wear it in a watch. No, I think I quite like the blue aluminium, but with a watch, like normally with a watch, you you you, you choose something that's going to last for a long time don't you but obviously with a smart watch that's a different conversation and probably something for another day hmm. but so the biggest feature was the as as expected the blood oxygen saturation level monitors okay so the so since we're on the geeking channel um, i'm sure you're going to go into detail in the fitness aspects of this and the medical aspects on on your channel pete but i, I was interested in the way that it does this so it fires red and infrared light um, and then it uses that to measure the color of your blood. Yep. And from that, it determines how much oxygen is present in your blood. Yeah, using an algorithm, Yeah, which pretty, is pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. So uh, it is a big a big feature. They were making a big thing about it. Um, I suspect that means a lot to a lot of people. I haven't needed to measure my blood O2 levels outside of the handful of occasions I've been in hospital. Yeah. And well, then it was a nurse measuring them. So I, I don't know that I would ever need to measure it. Or is this something that's going to tell me something I didn't already know? Well, uh, we'll, focus, we'll, we'll keep it focused on tech as much as we can. But I think it's one of those things, just like the, the erratic heartbeat stuff that they introduced on, on the previous Apple Watch. It just helps give it early indicators of a potential problem. So, yeah, it's not something you think, oh, do you know what I really need to? Unless you're like a high-performance athlete or... As you say, you're in hospital. It's not something you'd normally think about. I'd better check that. But having it could indicate, along with the other things like your heart rhythm and your heart rate, that kind of thing, your overall health, your overall fitness, and potentially any problems. And they mentioned some health studies around asthma, heart failure, COVID, and flus in general, um, using how using seeing how changes in blood oxygen saturation and heart rate can indicate early signals of these things or problems with these things so i think that's a good thing it's not you know like you say it's not something you've missed in your life but it could particularly with the current global pandemic be something of immense value to a lot of people yeah. if of course they have an apple watch yeah absolutely and uh, i'm i'm not belittling that at all uh, just uh, taking a light-hearted view of it of course i'm sure it will help many people and catching stuff early is a good thing Hmm. Uh, let's move on though to looking at what powers the watch so we've got the new apple s6 chip and this is a dual core piece of custom apple silicon that's based on the a13 bionic that's right and i i, I wasn't sure whether it was 20 percent faster or 26 percent faster than the previous chip which was the s5 in the hmm. apple watch series 5 but 20 something percent more so efficient if you're using an Apple Watch and you're you're thinking to yourself, this really could do with being a bit faster, then indeed the new Apple Watch is a bit faster. It is a little bit faster. Uh, the always-on display is now... Two, two and a half, half times brighter. Yeah. Oh, so that's good. If you're out in sunshine, I'd imagine, although I've never had the Apple Watch, you tell me, is it easy to read the face? Um, I've got a Series 2, so that is quite old now, but... Um, it can be a struggle in direct sunlight, so two and a half times brighter than the previous watch, which is probably brighter than my old Series 2. Yeah, it's probably going to be useful, and it says it's an energy-efficient, always-on display. The, the new S6 chip will be more energy-efficient than the previous one, so it's probably great. Yeah, and uh, we're going to talk about new chips a little bit later as well. Mm. Uh, so the other thing that's always on is the altimeter, so you can, you know, you can guess always see how pressure. high you are. <laughs> yeah, which, <laughs> um, you know, is, is important to know how high you are. Um, if you're hiking, that's a relevant thing. Again, it's a fitness thing to know how high you are. It also has a relationship with blood oxygen because the higher you are, your your blood oxygen saturation levels will decrease if you go higher because the air is thinner. So, again, no panic if you're really, really high up and it's, it's lower. You'd expect yeah. that. Good. And uh, some new face designs, obviously the... That's a, a key thing with, with the watch. So when you get a new Apple Watch, you want to see something new on the screen, mm. something new and fresh. So there are lots of new designs. Uh, I don't know that we need to particularly go into them in detail. Was there any that caught your eye as a, a keen watch person? Um, 
I'll be honest, you, you see, yeah, this is a good point because I, I prefer a traditional mechanical watch, as you know. Um, I'm wearing a chronograph today. So Same. I'd, I'd be interested in a chronograph watch face. I quite like the the tachymeter that they um, they demonstrated. Yeah, the chronograph pro face, I think they call it. Okay. I've got no interest in having Mickey Mouse tap his foot on my wrist. Um, I can't imagine why anybody would want that, but there we go. Horses and courses and all that and stuff. mice. Um, new, did- new tools for developers, though, with WatchOS 7 uh, that allow them to create new watch faces that perhaps did things uh, or do things, sorry, that they couldn't do before. So, yeah. Couple so, they, of examples of that. They gave examples of watch faces for, for surfers. So, um, baking in some features of surf apps in terms of tide times and that kind of thing uh, into into your watch face. Photography, I thought that was an interesting one about the light. Uh, so I, I can't remember the name of the app. They did, they did cite the app, but an app that can tell you what the light's looking like. Healthcare was the other one as well, integrating with apps that are specific for those areas of interest or, or disciplines. Uh, for healthcare professionals, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So um, some new faces and new tools to make new faces. So that's really great. And then they moved on to talking about the watch band itself something they call the solo loop watch band and they got terrifically excited about it and what it basically is is a, a stretchy silicone band that's available in a range of sizes you find the size that's about right and it stretches onto your wrist I guess. Uh, you do have to also choose from one of the seven colors right um, and it is durable and swim proof okay. but then so with the previous ones but I, I guess it's it's one less thing to to break or get caught isn't it yeah for sure and also, I, I actually thought it was interesting to to see it because I, when I wear my Fitbit, because I've always got a mechanical watch on my left wrist, and anybody who's a regular of the channel will now go through my videos and double check that. But I can assure you, I pretty much always am wearing a, a watch. Um, so I always wore my Fitbit on my right hand, mm-hmm. and I wore it with the screen on the inside. So cool. what I then have is a very ugly. Ages ugly belt buckle on the on the outside of my right hand so having if i was going to have an apple watch which indeed i am going to get one to review on the on the channel whether or not i actually wear it is another question but i think i would consider actually wearing it on my right hand if it was just a silicone band with no buckle no attachment no overlap yeah that would look quite neat and the watch face itself then is is on the underside of my wrist. So so we approve of that. Yeah, so it doesn't look like I'm pulling a, a shorts cough. You remember that, uh, the American general, when he wore two watches on, on each wrist? I don't remember Not that. two watches on each wrist. He wore two watches, one on each wrist, during yeah. the um, Gulf War. I, I don't remember that. But I remember General Schwartz cough, but yeah. uh, I don't remember him doing that. I remember in the 80s, it was, there was a trend to have lots of swatch watches up, right. you, up your same wrist, but that was before you were born, so... I'm, I am much, much younger than you, Pete. You are indeed quite old. Thank you. Uh, there's also the same watch band available in like a, a threaded. Yeah, braided, version. they call it. Braided. Recycled yarn, five colours. Um, look quite nice. Indeed. Yeah. So uh, no. There's also leather bands, again, with some kind of new enclosure without a buckle on it. Yeah. Um, there's Apple Watch Nike bands and the new face for the Apple Watch Is that Nike. the same as Apple Watch Nike bands? Um, if you pronounce it that way, I've always pronounced it Nike, mm. and I shall continue to pronounce it Nike. Okay, we've got into trouble before from um, ridiculing pronunciation on this channel, so we'll uh, we'll not go there. Uh, and to finish off that, there's of course the Hermes new uh, straps and face. If you want to spend hundreds of pounds on a leather strap for your um, and and the watch itself, mm. but that, again, probably one probably one once we get the watches to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so moving on, here is a an interesting new feature. They call this family setup. Yep. So this is where you don't have to have an iPhone to pair the watch to. So for your children or potentially an elderly relative, you can pair the watch to your phone for them. Yes. Caveat is that it needs to be a cellular enabled watch. Yes. In order to do this. But um, there were some just quite cool features. I can see this being useful. You can specify who your children can contact on the watch. Yeah. Which is nice. There's uh, GPS location, and you can set up alerts. So if yeah. you've said to them, you're not going to the park today, you could set yourself up an alert, and if they go to the park, then you know you can issue a punishment. 
or more positively if they do go to the park and that's where they should be and they stray outside of that then you will get an alert for that so potentially a way of safeguarding younger ones or indeed maybe older ones who've perhaps got alzheimer's yeah or starting to wander no, really good I, that is actually a, a really sensible suggestion yeah if there are people with alzheimer's they, that does happen so i can see that being a, a massive thing as long as they remember to put the watch on of course well i think the solar loop ha- helps with that it's just very easy uh, my mum's got chronic arthritis in her hand so being able to just slip it over the wrist rather than fiddle with a strap or a buckle or any kind of enclosure is great yeah absolutely uh there is a school time mode yes i really like that so one of the things um at the secondary school um that my child goes to uh, what do we call that what, what, what high school high school yeah that my my 13 year old goes to is they can't have phones at all um but I can see an argument for having an Apple Watch. So you have the school time mode, whether you're working at home, schooling or in school, where it goes into kind of almost a do not disturb mode. A lot of features are restricted and it's got a distinctive look so that teachers can see that it's in a particular mode. So they're not going to say, put that smart watch away, naughty boy or yeah. girl. So it had a it had a face with, with bright yellow a bright yeah. yellow ring, so easy for the teachers to see what's going on. Yeah. And, and also, if you homeschool your children, which obviously a lot of people are being enforced to do with the current pandemic, or they may choose to, we've done it in the past, I know you, you've you done it, hmm. um, having times where, where you can help your children to focus by not fiddling with a gadget, uh, that's a great idea. But as you say, they do need a carrier these, these when you're using this feature. Yeah, and... Uh Rather annoyingly, the carrier that we happen to use for, for, for our cellular phones here doesn't support Apple Watch. But uh, I suppose that doesn't prevent you from going with another carrier. No. Um, kids can create a Memoji on their watch as well. I'm sure that will please them. Yeah, uh, well, adults can do it as well. It's one of the new face options. Yeah. So that is uh, Apple Watch Series 6, but there was another watch announced, and that is Watch SE. Um this is a more affordable version at uh, just two seven nine. Uh, interesting point on prices. Uh, if you, I don't know if you've noticed this with advertising. It's never two hundred and seventy nine, or let's be honest here, two hundred and eighty. It's not, you know, let's let's not mess about. Uh, they'll never say that. What they'll say is two seven nine. Yeah. Same with adverts on the TV because it makes it. Oh, it's only two seven nine. What what does that mean? Two hundred and seventy nine dollars yeah. is not a cheap watch. No. Um, so. Apple have made it even easier for people to give them their money. If you're in the US and you have Apple Card, which is their their own branded credit card, you get uh, 24 easy payments on Apple Watch. They didn't mention any interest rate or anything. So, No, I'm sure it will be very favorable. Um, but, and yeah, 24 easy easy payments to, to get your Apple Watch SE. They, they, they just want one on everybody's wrist. Mm. Now, the, the Watch SE has got the, the S5 chip. Yeah, which is still apparently two times faster than Series Three, which is still available. Yes, yeah, so that, I wondered why they were comparing to Series Three, and of course, yeah, it's because it's still available. Um, again, there are cellular models. It does support family setup. Yeah, it's got pretty much all the sensors in it, although it doesn't have the blood oxygen sensor. Right, and um, I, I noted it was swim proof as well, although they didn't specifically say that, but it was on the the stat yeah. sheet. Um, the full detection, that's quite important. Yeah, and previous models have had that. And it, it's a, again, if you're thinking about getting one for an elderly relative, that's a, a massive plus. And I think there's a lot to be said for, along with the family setup, full detection, blood oxygen level monitoring. If you go for the Series 6 full Monty, then you've got a, a watch that can really quite effectively safeguard an older person who perhaps lives on their own or in assisted living um, so I, I think Apple to be commended for thinking of those features obviously their motive is primarily financial but it, it's still a good good feature for consumers yeah absolutely so uh, pricing wise series 3 is $199 should we just call it $200 Pete? 200, 200, 200 dollars US series 6 is from 400, 400. yeah, yeah so but not- you save a dollar you save a dollar. Um, Apple have been incredibly courageous as well with these these new watches and very environmentally conscious, or at least this is how they build it, by <laughs> not including a USB power adapter. Apple, 
at its finest. It's like we're we're not going to include a power charger in the watch that needs a power charger because you've probably got one. That probably is true, but we're still going to charge you the same amount for it. That's that's the thing that gets me. I got no issue with them not providing one, but what when you actually do need one and you go to buy one, what's that going to cost? And have they reduced the watch by the an equivalent amount? Of course they haven't. No, it's uh, it's just a way to extract a bit more profit from people. And I I think we need some clarity on that. Is it the the power charger that plugs into the wall socket? Because the Apple Watch, if you've never had an Apple Watch before, because they were saying, oh, everyone's got a USB charger. That's probably true. I would say most people have got at least one USB charger. But the cable for an Apple Watch is different. Yeah, I would say that this this has to be the wall adapter they're talking about. And yeah, I, I think it's a fair point. You know, I, I don't use any of them. But what, what, what I like about it is if I buy an iPhone... I don't use the power adapter. I leave it in its cellophane wrapper and the earbuds because they don't fit my ears. I just leave it all in there. So when I come to sell my device, the next owner gets pristine, pristine. accessories. So if you ever buy an iPhone from yeah. this man, you know you're going to get a pristine cable. So certainly the USB plugs that I'm getting are not going into landfill. Hmm. Other than quite often you do find with you know cheap products from China, they throw these things in. You know, thinking you need them, and I, I really don't. I'd, I'd rather buy a good quality multi charger, and I, that's what I use. Mm. So, I'm totally on board with this, but I don't want any the audience to to think that you know we think it's a good idea for loads of these unnecessary wall warts to end up in landfill. No, I don't think that at all. It's just the way Apple spin it. That's it. it it's it really grates on me. I have to say. Anyway, uh, you can order these things today. Right now, I, I believe. Um, so I assume that's what we're going to do in a minute. My my wife wants an Apple Watch. I've said I'm going to get her one. So unfortunately, Apple are getting some of my money today. Um, they are available from Friday. Yeah. So watch out. We'll we'll get some and see what we think of them. Watch out. See did what I really did there. Oh, I can't believe you did that. Well, that's apparently a dad joke. You know, <laughs> Fitness service, Pete. Apple Fitness Plus. Right? Yeah, so this is something we were expecting. Um, uh, actually, I wasn't expecting this, I must be honest. And I'm quite excited about this. And I'll talk more about it on my channel in detail. But Fitness Plus, workout metrics. So a voice-activated service where you can state a workout, your preferred trainer, and how long you want to work out for. You can start it on your phone, your iPad, or your Apple TV. It will sync to the watch and keep you motivated. And it will display your metrics as an overlay of the workout, which I think is actually quite motivating. And I am going to try that. So I, as soon as this is available, I'm going to put a video together on that for my channel uh, with some hilarity. I'm probably going to get someone else roped into it. If you'd like to see Dave in that, just let us know in the subscription uh, in the do. comments below. Well, it's just not going to happen. Um, I've got to be honest, Pete, this is my idea of hell. Not, not the idea of working out. I'm not opposed to exercise. Uh, I was always very keen on rowing. And I can see how having the, the metrics is an incentive and it's something that you work towards. And I, yeah. I'm, I'm totally on board with all of that. I just, it's the Apple style of it. You know, it's all very loud. It's very brash. It's very colorful. And uh, it's all linked to Apple Music, which means, you know, they're going to be choosing music that I just don't like because I'm, I'm an old curmudgeon and I, I like what I like. And I'm, I'm not particularly interested in listening to the latest hip hop tracks or I, I I've got a wide music taste, but I, I find a lot of modern music is not to my taste. Um, there, there were genres though, weren't there? There were genres you could choose from. It remains to be seen if any of those genres you would be willing to listen to. I, I'm sure there is. Uh, it's always, it's someone else's selection. If I'm working out, I, I mean, when I was on my rowing machine, I would listen to music that I like. Yeah. And you know, I, I had a particular, set of tracks for my workout so this is very much tuning into someone else's thinking yeah and i that's not really for me i i think i also need to say as well i'm, I'm not anti-fitness um i've got frozen shoulder hmm. and uh, i think it, it's worth saying this but before i got frozen shoulder i thought it was like a temporary thing that affects sports people and stuff and uh, a year later and i'm still suffering a lot of pain and also you know both shoulders now are freezing and it's actually something that takes you know anything up to five years it's been quite debilitating i've, I've seen it on you and I, I know how active you were before so i do have to 
you know, reassure, re confirm there that you are a, a naturally a active person. I nearly said athletic, but that's not what I meant. Yeah. So it, even sitting here now, I'm I'm in a lot of discomfort, and you, it's one of those things. That it's just <laughs> partly from being here with Pete. Yeah. Uh, it's just one of those things you've got to get used to, and but certainly the idea of doing. Um, I can't. I couldn't do cycling. I couldn't do dance. I can't jiggle my shoulders around. I can't run. You're not so. going to be doing any strength training as well, are you? Uh, do you think, think you could bench press at the moment? No, I can't do anything no. that involves the shoulders. So it's it's not a it's not, it's a not lack for of, you. Yeah, it's it's just not not available for me at the moment. So I struggle to get excited about it. Uh, I think my wife will probably be interested in some of the workouts. I think, like me, she she probably wouldn't. I hope they've got lots of different styles. I think, it, I think it certainly looked like from. that from the promotional video mm -hmm. that they showed us. And, you know, I know a lot of people in the UK have enjoyed Joe Wicks during lockdown. Uh, I, I've not seen any of his stuff in any... I've seen little clips here and there, but I can see a lot of people getting into this and keeping their fitness levels up. Uh, part of the service is going to have new workouts every week. So mm -hmm. that, that's good. I like this beginner's program. Yeah, I, I flagged that. I think that's a... That's a really nice idea. Yeah, because getting getting health, fit and healthy if you've not been in that place can be quite overwhelming. Um, and again, that's something I'll have a play with once, once we get that service. Uh, they did make a passing mention of privacy. Sort of your data is, is secure. Got no reason to uh, worry that that's not the case. And then what did you think of the pricing? Um well, obviously, we need to wrap this into the to the next next topic, but um, not surprising. Nine ninety nine a month uh, US dollars. So let's call it what it is: ten dollars um, or eighty dollars a year, mm. um, and, and that includes all the family. Yeah. So, but there's no sort of individual cheaper subscription. So, if you've got a big family, then that's great. Mm. Uh, you you benefit. Um, if you buy an Apple Watch, they're giving you three months free of charge. Yep. Um, I sort of feel like it ought to be a year. Yeah, I was expecting that. I was about to type 12 months, and then they said three months. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. So I just that's the noise is the uh, air conditioner, which apparently has, has just come on. Uh, subscription and services, though. Let's talk about this now and move on to it, because uh, um, what Apple said here is that they want to make it easy for everyone to discover their services and enjoy them and put money in their bank account. I'm sure that that is probably the least of their priorities, but... You know, so, something's got to fund all those. Um, yeah. So, so Apple One, um, that's what they're calling it. I don't think this is a surprise either. We knew this was coming. Yeah, we the spoke domain names have yesterday. been registered. Yeah. So all the services in one plan. So iCloud Music, Apple, sorry, iCloud, Apple Music, TV Plus, Arcade, News Plus, and when it comes at the end of the year, Apple Fitness. Yeah. And... Uh, there were three different pricing models that they showed us. Um, two of them were based on um, iCloud, Apple Music, Apple TV, and Apple Arcade. And then there was a bigger package, which was $30 a month, which also adds on News Plus and Fitness Plus. Yeah. Have you ever used News Plus? No, I haven't. Um, no. Oh. I've, I'd, I would be interested, uh, but it doesn't feature all of the, the things that I like to read. Um, I don't read many newspapers because, of course, whichever newspaper you pick up has got some sort of bias. So yeah. um, I prefer to get my news from other sources. Um, let's talk about the other services, though, um, just briefly, if you're not familiar with Apple services. Um, so I pay for um, an upgraded iCloud membership, which is shared with the family, and that just means that we've all got our, our backups online and... Uh, I don't have any issue paying for that. I think it's only two pounds forty nine a month. Yeah, I've, I've got something similar. Yeah. And it, it's the way things are these days, isn't it? Everything's backed up into the cloud, and yeah. it's a sensible thing. I mean, I primarily use OneDrive. Um, I've got Office three six five, personal and business, and the family have access to that. So that's where most of our stuff gets stored. But we do have the iCloud. I'm actually embarrassed to say that I have also all of those services, and I have a nice spread of things across all of them just for safekeeping not because of any kind of disorganization okay. you understand and some on your local laptop as well i'll wager don't use a laptop uh apple music um i don't think there's much to say about this other than um i don't use it i do i find it quite irritating is there's a sort of bug in the mac os app with some albums you'll it'll just play like a second of each track and just fire fire away all 
I'm, down I'm the sure. Album. I'm sure Apple will fix that um, at some point. I think my boys listen to it, so I hope they do because I'm paying fifteen pounds a month for that. Apple TV Plus. Uh, we said this yesterday. We we buy enough Apple Kit that we uh, we've got a free subscription to that. But is there anything to watch on Apple TV Plus? Uh, I I don't actually watch a lot of any kind of streaming service. Um, I've just cancelled a particular platform, which I won't mention here, but um, others may have done as well. Um, I haven't looked at Apple TV Plus, if I'm honest, so I can't answer that. But I'm hearing there is there is a, a series coming next year, a science fiction series, which is based on one of Isaac Asimov's books, which I am keen to at least have a look at. Hmm. So we will see. Okay. Uh, Apple Arcade. I want to talk about this briefly. It's not very expensive. It's five pounds a month. I do pay for it. Um, I was quite excited at the idea of Apple Arcade and the way that they they launched it and they spoke about creating very special games with developers and working with them. And uh, that's not really been my experience. They're very lightweight games. Okay. Some of them aren't even finished. Really? So, yeah. I was playing a particular game and um, you know just get to a point and there's no more game. Well, it just stopped. Yeah, because they haven't made it yet. Oh, I think okay. They have, I think they finished it now, but it's it's the same as Steam, you know, where you buy an early access title when you're not getting the whole game yet. Oh, okay. So I was very disappointed with that. Um, I find that there's not a lot of the kind of games that I would actually be interested in playing. Uh, again, I think my boys play it. So uh, the Apple services, I'm, I've not given them a particularly glowing review there, and yet I'm shelling out sort of over £20 a month for these things. Um, am I likely to change to the Apple One subscription? Might save you some money, particularly if you get the Apple Fitness Plus. Yeah, um, that might happen. Uh, Should we move on? Well, yeah, uh, just summing up, I, I only use out of those at the moment, I only use iCloud. So Apple Fitness Plus is going to have to be pretty good for me to go to the, well, I wouldn't get the one plan. It wouldn't make much sense, but we'll see. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, iPad is the next thing. And uh, Tim Cook was very keen to tell us how much he loves his iPad. Uh, he said it's important to everyday life. It's versatile. It's essential. essential. Mm. And also that they're excited about the amazingly creative ways that people are using iPad that they're seeing. Now, this may be true, but the cynical side of me, and as you know, I'm not a naturally cynical person, but the cynical side of me thinks probably most people are using it to watch YouTube videos. Yeah, that is what happens. There's, there's no doubt about that. We, we, we look at these videos of people doing wonderful creative things on their iPads, and we rush out to buy one, full of excitement. We get it home. We download apps and stuff. Then, yeah, by by day two, you're just watching YouTube. Aren't you? <laughs> I, I, we're probably being a little bit glib. I mean, this is my iPad Pro is the computer that I use the most yeah of all my machines and i do use it for office 365 um using that right now one note to to read my notes um constantly i'm constantly using this so i'll get this out over my laptop in most cases so actually it probably is essential to your workflow and it's it is versatile that and similarly i use mine probably half the time along with my macbook pro those are my two machines of choice depending on what i'm doing uh for this Typically, I will use my iPad, but it's a it's quite a it's a landmark year for iPad, isn't it? Yeah, ten years. That's gone quickly. It has. I um, yeah. I I didn't buy the the first one, but I had iPad two. Same here. Mm. Uh, and Steve Jobs launched iPad, didn't he? He did. So that that that's gone quickly. Ten years, and Steve Jobs was still with us ten years ago. Wow. And five hundred million sold. Now that's crazy. This is. Uh, I can get excited about iPad because I think iPad is a great product. And there's probably an argument that if you've got a great product, don't change it. Mm. It doesn't need a radical overhaul. This is a great system. Uh, however, Apple, again, are waxing lyrical about it. it's a big year for iPad. We're so excited. We've made so many massive improvements across the whole range, which yep. they later then clarified as just the full size. So the iPad mini hasn't been touched. And uh, going on about this, uh, the, the new iPad Pro, so... That's the next generation after this one that had the A12Z or Z CPU in it. And Tim Cook's again talking about that as being a massive improvement. But of course, we know it's not a massive improvement. It is an improvement, but it is basically an A12X with an additional core. And a uh, LiDAR scanner. I think that was the other yeah. headline feature. Yeah, that's it. So um, I'm not buying into that 
you know we've done amazing things with ipad pro it was a it was a minuscule upgrade really mm. and everything was focused around their 300 hundred dollar floating keyboard device really um but there are two new ipads yeah so the first one of, one of which we don't understand at all i'm just going to say that right now but let's start with the one that we do understand yeah so um ipad eighth generation so we we had a lot of time being told how great the seventh generation was there was a lot of that mm. today a lot of we've done this with this product it's great but here's a new one you know it, it was all a bit of showmanship but uh a12 bionic chip which is 40 percent faster than the previous one yeah i don't like the way that apple does this so they they'll always say percent faster than this or percent faster than that or uh, what they actually said for this particular uh, chip is they said two times faster than the top-selling Windows laptop, three times faster than the top-selling Android tablet, six times faster than the top-selling Chromebook. Well, uh, that's meaningless. Those are meaningless statements. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, they can't say that it's faster than every Windows laptop. I mean, let's not make a mistake here. The the A12 Bionic is a fast chip, but it's not as fast as the A12X or z or z series depending on where you're from and it's also a bit of a misleading statement because the top selling windows tablet or chromebook for that matter may not be the fastest the highest spec one well in, i'd have to say in the case of the chromebook it almost certainly won't be no you think about the application as i understand it, that most chromebook users are education or you know home users that kind of thing who who just want the basics and they want a cheap accessible device and that's probably true of some Android tablets and some Windows tablets as well. It, it, you can just manipulate statistics to to make your make your product sound better. Yeah, absolutely. Although at the price point, which we'll come to in a moment, of the iPad eighth generation, if you spent that equivalent money on any of these other devices, then the iPad would be faster. So, I, it is it is a great device. It is faster. The CPU is great. Um, but you know, let's have some meaningful benchmarks and reference points i think rather than this kind of spurious uh, oh well it's x times faster than something we're not going to actually detail so um the a12 bionic itself though this is a six core cpu yep it's got four gpu cores <coughs> uh, something that's new is uh, to ipad here is the neural engine yeah so tell me more about that i i got down five trillion ops per second but geek me out with this one give me some geekery i'm not sure i, I can in great detail, Pete, because I, I, I've not looked into it in any great detail. It's uh, They're basically cores that are dedicated to machine learning tasks. Yep. Um, so examples of that, um, things like motion tracking. Um, so uh, they gave an example of like tennis players. So it might analyze a tennis player's game or a golf player's swing, that sort of thing. So using uh, machine learning to uh, perform complex algorithms, computations to to do stuff that would take an ordinary CPU a lot longer. So basically splitting this stuff away from, from the actual CPU cores and then providing developers with direct access to these custom cores is what Apple Silicon is all about. But I want to come back to that in a moment. Yeah, that, it, it's little insights that we're getting here, isn't it? And yeah. I, I'm looking forward to your, your thoughts on that. Okay, so let's just quickly run over the other stuff. So it's basically the same iPad as before. Um, still supports the full-size keyboard and the Logitech peripherals, uh, which is what we use with our iPad Pros. L love the Logitech stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, still supports the Apple Pencil, but it's the first-generation Pencil. Yes. Um, he... With the with the uh, interesting charging metric. Yeah. So let's not go uh, there. Loads of people have talked about that. Yeah. Let's not let's not do that. They did speak about iPad OS 14 quite a lot, didn't they? Uh, they did, but again, we... We, we covered that WWDC. That's Sorry. it. And um, I think, you know, let's let's keep focused on the hardware. Um, it's a 10.2-inch Retina screen, and let's get to the pricing. $329 for everybody, $299 for education customers. So, yeah. you, And that makes a lot of sense for school use. Uh, that's a, a very functional machine. Yes, if you add the pencil and the keyboard, you're probably almost doubling that price. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, or, or, a, or a rugged case, which typically you get for education. Yeah, of course, they always show these beautiful designs and everyone's using their, their iPad without the case on. And No one ever does that. I, I, it does get me. I, I took this out of the case the other day. I took my phone out of the case to give them a proper clean. And they are things, no matter how you feel about Apple, just the engineering uh, is beautiful, but... 
you'd be absolutely bonkers to use one without a case because it wouldn't stay looking nice. But you see all this lovely stuff where they're using it naked. Hmm. The, the device, that is. Um, and uh, That's a completely different show. Yeah, Keep that's not what we saw today. Um, and it looks amazing. You've got these amazing, you know, colours that we'll come on to with the, with the other device in a minute. But no one ever uses them like that because they get scratched and you don't want to do that. Uh, that's it. They had this lovely film of a chap sort of walking through a, a redwood forest, being super creative on his iPad and, you know, writing his essay and using the scribble function in iPad OS 14. I, yeah, it's a typical Apple propaganda, but still, that doesn't change the fact it's a great device. At that price, what a computer. And um, they yeah. are absolutely brilliant. And uh, you can order one today, apparently, and it will be available on Friday. But let's move on to the iPad Air. Now, traditionally, the iPad Air was a thinner, lighter, more expensive iPad. Yeah. I don't understand this new iPad Air. It it looks like an iPad Pro. It looks like the smaller iPad Pro. Possibly it, a tiny bit thicker, but other than that, it's indistinguishable. Indistinguishable. Apart from the colours. Okay, let's just quickly let's just quickly get the colours out of the way. I know how important colour is to you, Pete. So we've got three new colours. Yep, so we've got rose gold, green and sky blue alongside the normal silver and graphite. Lovely. White and graphite. Yeah. So if you're into different colours, then it's uh, there are some colours to choose from. Which you can then put a case on so you'll never see the colour. Absolutely. Um, it supports Pencil 2. So this, this one, that and it attaches magnetically and it charges magnetically. And these are brilliant. They are superb. Um, so it's also got a 10.9 inch liquid retina screen I, off the top of my head I can't remember what the smaller um, iPad Pro is but uh, somewhere around 11 inches I think um, the screen has got a 2360 by 1640 resolution it does support true tone and various other things it's got an anti-reflective coating uh, touch ID is integrated into the top button yeah so um, Lots of people asking for Touch ID again, particularly with on the iPhone with coronavirus and the face mask. Although, I don't know if you've noticed this, but Apple have done a sort of quiet update. So if you're wearing a face mask and you look at it, it just goes straight to the type in your passcode. I hadn't seen that. Yeah, because um, it was extremely irritating. Yeah. Um, it uses the A14 Bionic, and this is worthy of some conversation. This is impressive. Yeah, so uh, Apple has been working with TSMC, obviously, for all of its Apple Silicon. And as far as I'm aware, actually, Apple is funding TSMC's processes in order to get exclusive rights. Don't quote me on that. I may not be completely correct on that, but that's what I, I believe is happening. And they are now down to a 5 nanometer process, and the A14 Bionic is going to use that 5 nanometer process. Now, that may not mean much to people what it means is that uh, on this a14 chip they're getting in just shy of 12 billion transistors and that's 40 percent more than they can fit in the seven nanometer chips yes so you can get more onto the same size chip and we are starting to get to the the theoretical limits of actual physics here we're, we're measuring these these transistors in atoms he said that's yeah. how small they are that that is incredible it is amazing. And what's more amazing, though, is that Apple's um, fabrication process, or I should say TSMC's fabrication process, is so good that they're getting decent yields. Now, this is one of the massive problems that Intel has had in trying to reduce its fabrication process, uh, is that the yields are very poor. So it's not, it's not so cost effective. Perhaps explain what, what you mean by yields, just for those who may not know what they may, that means. So you can't... To, uh, let's uh, let's do the usual constant geekery thing, which is to, to try and simplify this. Um, but it not it doesn't always work. I think that that's the way to, to explain it. The fabrication process doesn't always work. Perhaps you're making an eight core CPU and two of the cores don't work. So what Intel will do is switch those cores off and sell it as a six core CPU. Yeah. So it make they make it look like there are loads and loads of different product lines, but really there aren't as many as it might appear. And when you buy the lower spec processors, what you're getting is the products that are not fully functional. Of course, they, they are fully functional. If they're selling it as a four-core CPU and it, it's got four functional cores, then 
there's no issue with it. It's not like they're not going to perform. You're just getting what you pay for. Exactly. But if, if what they're wanting to make is eight core CPUs and they're only getting six or seven cores that are for, that are working properly, then the yields obviously are not good enough and they can't make it pay. So uh, it's a gross oversimplification probably. And I'm sure that someone's going to uh, perhaps... Didn't mean to put you on the spot. With no, that, no. Or well, perhaps someone will help us in the comments with a more detailed explanation Um but that's the basic gist of it. Now, this was this is essentially, as far as I'm aware, this is the difference between the A12X and the A12Z or Z, that additional core. In other words, uh, TSMC improved that fabrication process so Apple was able to make a slightly better version of the same chip. Yeah. Now they're going down to this 5 nanometer process and they're obviously getting decent yields out of it, otherwise they wouldn't be launching. Yeah. And they must have known this before they announced Apple Silicon. So... The A14 Bionic is going to have a six-core CPU, and um, our TV's about to switch off. Let me just just deal with that because otherwise you uh, you don't get a lovely background if you happen to be watching this on on the video. Uh, now it's an ARM architecture, which means big little, so you have high efficiency cores. So these are slower cores that use less power, mm -hmm. and you have high performance cores. So in this case, there are four little cores, two big cores. This is how uh, ARM products get their amazing battery life and peak performance. Yeah. So, so that's what we're getting here. There's a four-core GPU, and they said there's a 30% performance increase. Yeah. Two times faster graphics than an equivalent price PC laptop. They demonstrated an it HP. It was an HP. Yeah. I didn't catch which model it was alluding to. It was probably just a generic HP, but... Again, this is they're, the problem. They're not, they're not being specific, are they? So No, but they are comparing, I suppose, on price. And if you've got a wad of cash that you want to spend, they're saying, for your wad of cash, ours will be faster than theirs. Yeah, that's, that's basically So it. give us your cash. Hmm. They, they're obviously referring to, I would have thought, an Intel onboard graphics of some description. Um, they talked about 4K video editing being a breeze. Yeah, uh, and I'd imagine that would be the case because, again, we come to these custom cores, and they did speak again about the neural engine, and this particular chip has got 16 cores on the neural engine. Yeah, 11 trillion operations per second. That is some computing power there. Now, just this is where I feel like um, we just need to re revert back to Apple Silicon, and just to be clear, there was no talk about Mac-specific Apple Silicon at this event. Um, but obviously, I've prepared some videos on Apple Silicon, and I know some of the people that watch the channel are really keen to find out more about Apple Silicon. So we, we're we learning something here. Mm, definitely. And one of the things that uh, the detractors of Apple Silicon will come up with is they'll say, it's just an ARM chip, which, of course, it isn't. Although they compare it just as a CPU, but it's not just a CPU. Or they'll say it's just a CPU with onboard graphics, but it's more than that because you've got... Uh, all of these different custom pieces of silicon doing very custom tasks. Now, let's be very clear here. They can only be used to do those custom tasks. Um, but in the whole scheme of things, when, when you provide that additional computing power, so if you're a developer and you're tapping into the machine learning abilities using the neural engine, you're not touching the, or you're not overloading the CPU cores, you're not overloading the GPU cores. This is something completely separate that you're using to perform those calculations. On an equivalent traditional PC, you're using CPU or perhaps uh, GPU compute to do those same tasks. Which will be busy doing other things at the same time as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this uh, idea of having lots of customized chips on Apple Silicon is what makes it really interesting. It's a, a harks back to the old days of computing. Uh, it's a new paradigm. It's something interesting. They're bringing it into iPad as well. Uh, which is just gonna it's gonna have the effect of making the iPads very compelling. You know, most people would probably want to pick an iPad over a laptop. A laptop. If you're if you're talking about content consumption, the iPad is probably more convenient. Hmm. Uh, it's lighter, the battery lasts longer, so on and so forth. So I just thought those are a few thoughts on Apple Silicon that we, we gleaned from today. I think when the Mac Silicon comes out, if it's on, I'm sure it is on that five nanometer process, I think it's going to be exciting. I'm gutted that it didn't feature today, but uh, we can wait. We can. And they did mention about the GPU architecture 
they focused on both sustained and peak periods of improvement. So they are they are recognizing because a lot of people will say, oh yeah, you know, you can benchmark an iPad Pro faster than this, that, or the other, but it's only for peak performance. But we've not seen that in our use of them. And Apple are making a point of saying they're looking at sustained performance as well. They also mentioned these machine learning accelerators. So as well as the neural engine, you've got these additional, I'm guessing more bespoke silicon just to give you more oomph, which gives you 10 times faster machine ML computations. Yes, then uh, that was 10 times faster than the previous iPad Air, which didn't have any of that yeah. functionality. Right. Just um, popping back to your thought on GPU there, a lot of the, again, the detractors from Apple Silicon, those who say, well, GPU performance isn't what you know isn't going to be great and all of that. The, these are people who are thinking in gaming terms. And these, uh, whilst you can play games on the iPad. In fact, let's talk about that in a moment. The 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 real world performance is what we're interested in. Yeah. We we just want to be able to do whatever it is we're doing and not have the device get in the way of what we're doing. So if I'm if I'm doing some photo editing, I want that just to be a smooth experience. If I'm doing video editing, I want it to be a smooth experience. If I'm watching YouTube, I want it to be a smooth experience. I don't care what it is that I'm doing. I just want it to be a, a good experience. experience. That's it. And I, I couldn't care less what the raw power of the GPU is, as long as it provides me w with a great experience. You want it almost to be transparent to you as a user, don't you? Like you say, you don't want the device getting in the way. And that's what we've experienced with certainly the iPad Pros. And this, this really, uh, as we'll come to, I guess, when we're summing up, is an iPad Pro. To all intents and purposes, it is. But before we get before we get to that, they did just give a a, a couple of examples of developers, and the only one I'm going to pick out. In fact, I'm going to pick out two. Sorry, there was a demo game, and it was interesting that they just did a side by side comparison with previous generation, for, so we could see the graphics improvement. It looked really good to me, and it was running at a 60 fps. It looked of, you know, uh, last gen console quality for, yeah. for certain. So I'd be quite happy with that on my iPad. Um, the other app they they showed off was Pixelmator doing. Yeah, I know made a note of this one. Doing some enhancement on images. So, uh, and this I thought was really compelling because this this shows the potential of machine learning. For me, is uh, you've probably seen these YouTube videos that mock TV shows where you've got you know some kind of FBI or CIA or British intelligence and they look at a picture and they say zoom and enhance and you get this really blurry image and it comes in and goes me 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 and goes into more detail on pixels that aren't there but we did see uh, a crop in of a, a, an image of a snowboarder and the machine learning it obviously it can only enhance what it has but it was doing a pretty good job of it it, it was doing a very good job of it yeah it was i mean it's not perfect but it, it was very good yeah and, and quite exciting to see that kind of technology definitely so um so the new the new silicon is uh, providing more opportunities for developers and making it a faster ipad so we like that that's good uh they've switched it to usb-c yeah like, like the ipad pro um it's got a front seven megapixel camera that does uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second what's that like I think it's quite similar to the iPad Pro camera. Is it, isn't it? Is it similar to yeah. that one? And um, what about on the back? I, I noticed that was a 12 megapixel. That is a 12 megapixel camera, which does 4K 60 frames per second. And um, actually, it's the same as the one on the iPad Pro, Pete. Is it? It is. Is it? And what about the uh, audio? Uh, well, now they've redesigned the speakers so that when you go <laughs> into they? landscape mode, you're still getting stereo. Really? Are you? Yeah. Uh, is that that? That's probably not been thought of before. Uh, no, it's been done on the on the iPad Pro. Has it? Yeah. Really? So it also supports the uh, Magic Keyboard. So this is the, the. Oh, is that the one that came with the iPad Pro? That's the one. Oh, yeah, we've got okay. It. Okay. So it it looks like an iPad Pro. Sounds like an iPad Pro. It, it probably is an iPad Pro, isn't it? But it's called an iPad Air, and it's. 500 well i'm not going to do this i'm not going to play their game 600 dollars <laughs> yeah and it's available next month so that's october, october. so i i've got to say I, I off the top of my head i can't remember the pro entry price of the the smaller ipad pro it's around 769 i think so why would you buy one of those when you can have this i suspect in raw computing performance the a14 bionic is probably 
It's probably faster than the iPad Pro on single-threaded tasks, and it will be behind on multi-threaded. That's what my guess is. I suspect the graphics is similar. So in real-world usage, would you ever notice the difference? Probably not. So, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. As we both have iPad Pros, yes. they're not the current generation, they're last year, previous generation, but really as we've has. already established, they're, they're, there's really not, not much to choose between them. If you bought an iPad Pro this year, because obviously ours is a, a bit behind that, if you'd done that, after today's announcement, would you feel shortchanged? I certainly would if I'd bought the 11-inch one. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I've been in this position a lot of times, and I'm sure many many others can relate to this, where you, you buy the Apple product and they promptly release something better and make you feel like yours is useless. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not useless. They're all fantastic. Uh, they're all great machines. Um, I just don't understand why you would have two things in the lineup that are basically the same device. That, unless colors. I'm missing something. Colours. It's the colours, yeah. And it's not thinner and lighter anymore. I don't know. Well, anyway, there we go. They, these are the amazing iPad announcements. Um, and they, of course, at the end, there was something more. Because when Tim Cook started, he said, it, we, we want to talk about two products today, didn't we? But there was something more. Yeah, it wasn't anything exciting, though, was it, really? I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. So, iOS 14, iPadOS 14, watchOS 7, tvOS 14, all released tomorrow, 16th of September. Nothing that we weren't expecting, because that was all pretty much preluded. Preluded? Preluded? Yes. At WWDC. Yeah. Good. So, that's brought us pretty much to the end of our notes. So, we didn't see... AirPods Studio, and a lot of uh, commentators on YouTube called that. Well done, guys. You got yeah. it right. Uh, we didn't see iPhone 12, and again, you called it. Um, Luke, in particular, uh, you'll be happy. You don't need to jump off a bridge. Yeah. Um, no no Apple Glass or... or no. Egg. Ah, which reminds me, Pete. I've, um, got, I've got egg on my face. Egg on my face. I uh, hope yeah. you've made note of that, Ben. Um, and... Uh, what else was there? I did bring some wipes, so um, I, I will egg myself later. I, I was even going to do a gag as well and get some sort of comedy egg, and I just uh, other things took over today with the business, unfortunately. So missed opportunities. Ma so, maybe we can do that in the future. Well, egg, egg Pete. I'm yeah. sure everyone will enjoy that. If you'd like to see me egg Pete in the future, please uh, leave a comment below. Thanks. Thanks for that. That's all right. So um, um, overall, then. Uh, a pretty underwhelming event. Um, got to say, I was hoping for more. I think it was very exaggerated. Um, is that the one? Word there was a lot of hyperbole, which hyperbole. there always is at Apple events, but yeah. there was a lot of showmanship, and it did feel like they really stretched it out. Yeah, it it really it grates on me that their their behaviour. You know, they're behaving like they're saving the world. Mm. And uh, their products, you know, there are some good products there. They're a company that makes good products. Uh, there are plenty of people that would argue against that as well. Um, I don't like everything Apple do. I've said this before. I'm not a fanboy. I'm, you know, I'm not salivating at the prospect of any of these things. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna get some Apple watches to try. Yeah, we'll do um, that. because you know that has some relevance. Mine, my Apple Watch Series Two is four years old and about to die. It's starting to show its age. So we'll we'll give those a try. I've got to say that's a pretty sad indictment, though, isn't it? Because if if you spent that same amount of money on, say, a, a, a decent watch, I mean, if you go out and buy a, a Seiko Five mechanical yeah. watch, you can get one of those for for under a hundred pounds. You know, piece of nice quality engineering, it'll last you for twenty years. Yeah, e easily and beyond. Doesn't need updating. Yeah. Doesn't need charging. Which is why I wear a mechanical watch. Def definitely a topic for another day in more detail, I'd say. It definitely is. Um, I'm interested to have a look at the development opportunities for the watch. I fancy having a little tinker with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I ever get anywhere with that, then uh, feature that on the channel. I've got a couple of ideas for apps. So um, I wanted to have a go at that. So that that's the main reason why, why I'm interested in the Apple Watch. Um, I'm going to do two reviews on the channel for Apple Watch. So... I'm going to do an unboxing when it arrives and just my first impressions from the perspective of someone who's a techie but hasn't had an Apple Watch before. And I hope that might make interesting viewing for some. Uh, then I'm going to invite you back, Pete, to do a, a more in-depth uh, review where you'll be able to answer some of the questions from your, your experience using it that I don't know the answers to. 
Um, so two videos coming on Apple Watch on Constant Geekery. Uh, Pete's channel, Not Another Diet, you'll be featuring a, a more in-depth review, particularly on the health features of the watch. Yeah, so I'll do, a, I'll do a similar unboxing and my thoughts on going from a Series 2, which I haven't felt the need to upgrade for four years. And I'm to be honest with you, I wouldn't probably be doing it now if it wasn't for the fact my Series 2 is, is just starting to show... You know, the battery doesn't last as long as it, it needs to and that kind of thing. So it's for more for practical reasons than anything else. But I'll be looking at that. I'll be looking at the Fitness Plus service. Uh, I'll basically be looking to rinse as much video content out of it as I can for the for the fitness side of things uh, and have a few laughs along the way. Yeah, I'm, I look forward to that. I mean, obviously, I'll be helping you produce some of that, I'm sure. I'm sure you will. Um so uh, we should probably wrap it up. I think this has probably gone on for far too long. Uh, we much originally, like Apple's event. Much like Apple's event. Unfortunately, I think we've actually outperformed Apple's event because we we plan to do 30 minutes, and I reckon we, we're some way beyond that. Hopefully it's been more more, more engaging or, or less underwhelming. Yes, yeah, so I, we will put chapter markers in so people don't have to watch the whole thing if they don't want to. I hope you enjoyed our, our first effort at a podcast. I hope it was entertaining enough. I hope we... We uh, did enough scintillating conversation and expert analysis to keep you guys happy. Um, if you've got any suggestions for the format, please let us know in the comments. We are totally open to that. As you know, I'm always interested in engaging with you guys in the comments section. Um, we are thinking that the podcast and some other Dave and Pete videos that we've got planned will need to go onto a new YouTube channel. That's what we're thinking. So yeah. we've each got our own channel and, and we're thinking about starting a new channel where we'll, the podcast stuff would live. Uh, we're struggling to come up with a name for our new channel. Um, so if you've got any um, bright ideas on that, then um, by all means. Uh, we, we would welcome them because, yeah, we're, we're fresh out of ideas. Yeah. Good. That's it. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate it. I uh, have to say, really appreciate all of the support that we receive for the channel. Uh, love reading your, your comments and uh, suggestions and ideas. Um, that's always great to interact with you guys. Uh, I'm very thankful for those who've supported the channel by subscribing. Um, try to um, deserve your trust by bringing you good quality content and more of it. So uh, if you feel so inclined, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, maybe we did enough to earn a thumbs up or a thumbs down if that's how you roll. In any case, see you next time for some more geekery.